Question 15 says water moves through a constricted pipe in steady, ideal flow. At the lower point, shown in the figure below, the pressure is 1.7 times 10 to the 5th pascals. The pipe radius is 2.6 centimeters. At the higher point, located at y equals 2.5 meters, the pressure is 1.22 times 10 to the 5th pascals, and the pipe radius is 1.3 centimeters. So A, find the speed of flow in the lower section. B, find the speed of flow in the upper section. And C, find the volume flow rate through the pipe. Now because this problem has a change in potential energy because the water travels up, and the only equation that we have from this chapter that, ha that incorporates potential energy is the Bernoulli equation. And so what we're going to do is try to work with the Bernoulli equation and see if we cannot find the flow speed in the lower section. And so I went ahead and wrote out the Bernoulli equation where the pressure in area 1 plus 1 half of the density plus uh, times the velocity squared plus the density times the gravity times uh, y1 is equal to the, the pressure in the second location plus 1 half of the density times the velocity in the second location squared plus the potential energy. And the one thing that we can really quickly simplify is that um, y1 is equal to zero. So this whole term is gone. And so when we, do, when we delete the, uh, the y1 term here, uh, what we get is the initial pressure plus one half of the density times the initial velocity squared is equal to the final pressure plus one half of the density times the final velocity squared plus uh, the potential energy. And now the problem gives us the pressure, it gives us uh, the, the initial pressure, it gives us, uh, we know what the density of water is, it gives us the final pressure, again we know the density, it gives us y2, we know what gravity is. The only thing we don't know is the final velocity and the initial velocity. So we have to use the equation of continuity uh, to solve for the velocity of one of these, so we only have one unknown. And so we get that the area 1 uh, times velocity 1 is equal to the area 2 times velocity 2. And the area is talking about the basically the radius of the pipe in the bottom and the radius of the pipe in the top. So we can solve for V2, and we get that V2 equals A1 times V1 over A2. And so we can plug this in right here. And we got to remember when we plug it in that uh, it goes behind uh, the square, so it's it's a quantity squared. So all I've done is rewritten the equation to incorporate um, the, the equation of continuity so we only have one unknown variable. We know what the area of both, is, of both are because the area is going to be equal to um, the uh, pi times the radius squared. And so the first step in solving this problem is I want to take this whole term and move it over to this side of the equation. So what I end up with is uh, p the initial pressure plus one half of the density times the initial velocity minus one half of the density times the area one over area two squared times velocity squared. And all I've done to this is uh, basically whenever you have two terms multiplied by each other inside of uh, being being brought to the squared power, you can just put the square over each one of these terms and it will equal the same thing. And so I've moved the velocity, the initial velocity squared outside of the parentheses. And the one thing you'll notice is that in two of these terms, so this is a this is supposed to be a minus sign, it's a poor minus sign, uh, or actually, no I'm looking at the wrong one, this is the minus sign. Um, but in this term and in this term, there are three uh, variables that are the same. So this has a one-half, this has a one-half, this has a density, this has a density, this has a velocity squared, this has an initial velocity squared. So we can actually take and factor those things out. And when we do that, we get the uh, one-half of the density times the velocity squared times one, because whenever you factor out the entire thing from here, it's all of its times one, one minus the area one, the initial area over the final area squared, 
and then it equals this this term. And so what we've done is we've effectively been able to uh, isolate the velocity. So we've we've combined the two velocities into one one thing. And the, the next thing I want to do, I'm going to subtract over the the initial pressure to this side, and then I I will divide by the the rest of the term in order to completely isolate the initial velocity. And so here is uh, basically the same equation, except the the initial pressure has been subtracted to the other side. And now I've got my final uh, my final equation, or it's it's almost the final equation. I'm going to move some of this stuff up out of the way. Um, and so you can see that what I've done here is I've taken the one half and I multiplied it over so that it's multiply everything's multiplied by two, and then I took the density and the this term right here and I divided it both on, onto the other side and so the velocity squared is equal to this and so in order to find the initial velocity I have to take this and find the square root and so with this equation all we need to do is plug in our numbers and, and it tells us in the problem that the the final pressure is uh, 122,000 Pascals. The initial pressure is uh, 170,000 pascals. The we know that the the density of water is equal to 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. We know that gravity is equal to 9.8 meters per second squared. It tells us in the problem that y2 uh, y2 is equal to 2.5 meters, and we know the area because the area um, it gives us the, and you got to remember to convert to meters, but it gives us the radius in centimeters of uh, of 2.6 for for the initial radius, so that would be equal to 0 0.026 meters. You got to take this, uh, square it, and times it by pi, and so that the initial area is equal to 0 0.002124. Uh, square meters and same thing with the area 2 make sure you convert it to meters you're gonna get 0 0.000531 meters squared and all you have to do now is plug all of these values into this equation and you'll get that the initial velocity is equal to uh, 1.77 meters per second and then if you remember right, we've already solved for uh, we've already solved for v2. We said that v2 equaled v1 times area one divided by area two. And so if we take um, take th uh, our v1 and plug it in, the area one, the area two, plug those in, we'll get that v2 is equal to 7.08 meters per second. And so um, the final so that's part B and the final question is find the volume flow rate through the pipe and so the volume uh, we will say the volume is equal to the the change of X times the area and so um, the change of X being uh, per second would be would be 1.77 meters per second so we take the one or or if you wanted to do to do the 7.08 either one would would work you just have to remember to use uh, if you use v1 you have to use a1 if you use v v2 you have to use you have to times it by a2 and you're going to get the same answer on either one you'll get that the volume flow rate is equal to um, 0 0.00 three seven five nine cubic meters per second and that's the final answer